Well, let's speak now to uh, Nada Hashemi via Skype from Denver. He's the director of the Center for Middle East Studies at the University of Denver. Good to have you with us, sir. sir. Is the Syrian opposition right to boycott these talks in Sochi? Well, of course they are. Um, you know, the early part of your report um, um, noted that there is ongoing uh, bombing of civilian targets in Idlib province. Um, some of those bombing raids against civilian targets um, are done by Russian aircraft. And so at the same time that uh, Russia is, you know, bombing uh, Syrian civilians in Syria, it's trying to preside over a, a peace process. And, you know, the, 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 the entire process is objectionable simply on those grounds. One of the biggest backers of the Assad regime is now trying to, I think, fundamentally consolidate its military gains on the ground by going through this exercise, hoping to um, give democratic and constitutional legitimacy to its war gains on the ground. So I think there's strong um, grounds for, for opposing um, Syrian um, um, opposition participation in a peace process that clearly isn't geared toward but, establishing uh, lasting peace. All right, but the, 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 what are we to make then of the fact that the UN special representative for Syria is attending uh, these talks in Sochi? That lends them uh, some credibility, doesn't it? Well, the UN doesn't have, you know, an independent voice in and of itself. It represents the the will of its members. Um, I would point out that um, while it's true that the UN representative is going there, Britain and France and the United States are not attending, and they've explicitly said that they um, do not uh, want to give a stamp of approval on these Sochi talks. They prefer a UN-sponsored, uh, you know, Geneva process that um, is a different. You know, process that is more inclusive and more in keeping with at least the UN Security Council resolution uh, 2245. That is the framework and the basis of peace negotiations that all sides have bought into. So I wouldn't read too much into the participation of Stefan de Mistura. I think he's there simply um, uh, to just observe. It's, it, it doesn't represent in any way the will of the international community. All right, but, but Russia and Syria have effectively won this war militarily, haven't they? What options do the, does the opposition have now? Um, not very good ones. Um, most of their backers have abandoned them. Um, uh, the United States, you know, at least rhetorically, claims to um, support the um, and the removal of saw statements recently in that direction. But, you know, fundamentally, we forget that there is this peace process, but the peace process is really uh, being shaped by the military reality on the ground. And um, as you stated correctly, um, the, you know, Russia and Iran have prevailed in this conflict, um, backing their, their ally Assad in Damascus, while the rebels really have no international backing that can um, change the balance of power on the ground and um, lead to more serious negotiations. So unless that changes, I suspect Russia is going to go through this exercise of a peace process, um, hoping to, um, you know, uh, send a message to the international community that, look, you know, you're tired of this conflict. We're not tired. We're providing some option for stability. Please support us and please finance the reconstruction of uh, Syria. I think that's the plan from Moscow's perspective. Okay, one final question. Where does Turkey fit into all of this and its offensive uh, uh, against the YPG in, in northern Syria? That's a great question. I think for Turkey, it all comes down to one issue, the Kurds. Uh, they're no longer interested in serious uh, resolution of the fundamental uh, political conflict in Syria. They're interested in uh, preventing um, you know, the rise of a Kurdish autonomous state on their border, and they're seeking now to you know, you know, uh, create a buffer zone. Um, and so for Turkey, it's all about uh, the Kurds and nothing more. And so I don't expect the Kurds to shift their position in any significant way uh, in terms of advancing a genuine peace process that can bring this you know, bloody conflict in Syria into its seventh year to an end. Good to talk to you. So many thanks indeed, Nada Hashemi there in Denver. Thanks.